हे गाइज वेलकम बैक आम स्मित फ्रॉम बैक बेंच कोडर सो दिस इज अ सेकेंड पार्ट ऑफ लर्न रिडक्स बाय कन्वर्टिंग ए प्योर रिएक्ट एप टू रिएक्ट रिडक्स इन द फर्स्ट पार्ट वी हैव मेड द फुल एप विद प्योर रिएक्ट एंड इफ यू हैव नॉट वॉच दैट प्लीज चेक दैट आउट एंड इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू इंट्रोड्यूस रिडक्स बट बिफोर दैट वी आर गोइंग टू सी वाट्स द प्रॉब्लम विद प्योर रिएक्ट वाई वी रियली नीड रिडक्स ओके सो दिस इज अ करेंट सिनारी ऑफ आर रिएक्ट एप राइट नाउ सो जस्ट लेट मी गो थ्रू दिस वन से अगेन ओके सो दिस इज अ पेरेंट कॉम्पोनेंट एप वेर दिस नोट स्टेट प्रेजेंट and it also holds two function which is create node and toggle node and then under this app component there is this three component create node all nodes and important nodes and in case of create nodes we are passing the create node function which is eventually pushing a new node to this node state and in the all nodes and important nodes we are passing this nodes and toggle nodes as a property and then under this all nodes we are mapping through all the nodes and rendering another component which is node and then under this node there is another button which is add to important or remove from important and on click on this component we are just triggering this toggle node so that's the whole story of our app without redux now let's see what's the problem okay so the problem with pure react so the first problem is where the state should live okay so let me explain this if i go to this diagram without redux okay so in the present scenario we always need to create our state in the parent component right so that all the child component can access that state and now let's imagine we need to add another feature in our app and to add that feature we need to create another component which is the sibling of this app component right so let me create another component okay and this is the sibling of this app component let's say this is app 2 and this new component also needs this node state now how can we handle that okay so the solution is we need to create another component which should be the parent component of this two component so just let me show this okay so now this is the parent component and with that we also need to ship this state to the parent component and we also need to ship this function to the parent component like this okay and now pass this node state create node and toggle node all these three properties to this app component and this app to component and now just look at the problem guys when you introduce another feature in our app we just need to modify the whole state and leave the state to the parent component right so that's the issue look at this so where the state actually should live and if i add another component or another feature as a sibling of the parent we need to leave the state again and now the second point is properties drilling let me explain what is this so just let me undo this all okay cool now see this in the node component we need to access this toggle node function and this toggle node function is actually defined in this app component and so to access this from this node component we just need to pass this through our all nodes and then from this all nodes to this node component and this all nodes actually don't need this toggle node property this all nodes component just passing this property toggle node property to the another component that's all what it is doing now let's imagine there is another component between this all nodes and this node and then again we need to pass this property through that component and this is called component drilling this is a problem with pure react and we need to solve this and then the third issue is uh, state becomes less maintainable okay so let's understand this and let's say there is an error in this node component and now to solve this you need to go to this app component cause the state and this toggle node function is defined in this component and now we need to first check this component and then as you are sending this property to this all nodes component we need to again check the all nodes component if there is any bug and then let's say there is another component in between all nodes and nodes and we need to also check that component and then finally we will check the node component if there is any bug or not and now look at the problem guys we need to go through all this middle components which is getting this toggle node and the state as the property so that makes our app less maintainable and then the fourth point is app becomes slow and this is quite obvious cause we are passing some unnecessary properties to some components i hey, look at this all nodes component actually don't need this toggle node com properties it is just transferring this property to this node component that's all and now you may think that this is small problem for this app cause there is only four or five component but let's imagine an app which has hundreds of component like facebook or amazon and something like that and for that level of app this is a huge problem and we need to solve this and to solve this we will introduce redux 
So this is exactly why you need a state management tool like Redux that makes it easier to maintain the states. And let's see how we can solve this with Redux. Okay, so what Redux says is that there should be only one state and that should be present outside the full React app. Now this is important guys, Redux is a separate tool which only manages the state. So this is outside the React app. Okay, let's imagine this yellow box is our Redux state. This is named global state. So every time I say global state, it refers to the Redux state, okay? And with this, we can plug any data into any component. Just look at this. We define this node array. We define the create node function inside this global state. We define the toggle importance function inside the global state. Okay, now let's go through the component tree again. In the app component, we don't need any of these properties. Okay, in the create node component, we need this create node function and we can directly get this from the global state. And this is what React says, plug any data into any component. We can directly get this create node function from this global state to this create node component. And inside this all nodes, we can directly get this node state from the global state. And in the important nodes, again, we can directly get the nodes from this global state. And then inside the node component, we just need this toggle important function and we can get that from the global state. So that's the main Redux philosophy. And now let's see if it can solve those issues. Okay, so the first issue is where the state should live. Okay, so there is only one major state and that is Redux state and that should be lived outside the full React network, full React app. And now if we want to add another feature, let's say sibling of this app, we can just get the data from this global state. Simple. Okay, and let's see the second one. Properties drilling. Okay, so let's see. Can you see any of our component is getting unnecessary properties? Of course not. The previous problem was without Redux, we are getting this toggle node properties in this all nodes component because we need to pass this to the node component. But with Redux, we don't need that. Our node component can directly access this toggle important function from the global state. So no need of properties drilling. Okay, so the second issue solved. Third issue is stateless maintainable. Now look at this. If I get any problem in our node component, we just need to check our node component and our global state. That's all. There is no in-between components we need to check. Right. So the third issue solved. Let's see the fourth. App becomes slow. Come on. We are not passing any unnecessary properties to any of our components. So yeah, that is solved. And just like this, we can improve the efficiency of our app with any state management library. Okay, so enough talk, let's now implement Redux in our app. And for that, we just need to install some packages. So go to our CMD. Cool. Okay, kill this server. Uh, npm install Redux. React Redux. Redux Thunk. And Redux Dev Tools. Mm. This is quite interesting package. So extensions and that's all. So let the installation complete. See you in a minute. Okay, so I hope you guys have installed all these four NPM packages. So let me just go through this again. This is React Redux just to connect your React app with the Redux environment. And then this is Redux. This is a separate package to create your store and all those Redux tabs. And then this is Redux Dev Tools extension. Now look at this guys, this is extension, not extensions. I made a typo in the last video, so just keep an eye on it. And then the last one is Redux Thung. This is to perform all our asynchronous tabs inside Redux. Okay, so in the last section, we have seen how we can improve our React app using Redux. What are the issues without Redux and how Redux can help us to resolve those issues. So again, the main philosophy of Redux is to create a single store, which holds all our states and then plug any data into any component. It means we can connect any of the React component with the store, no matter wherever this component is present. Okay, so let's now understand the Redux workflow. Redux has a very simple workflow, just don't make this complicated, okay? Okay, so this all starts with this Redux store, which we call global state. And this is our React component. So let's say this is our all nodes component. And this is our store. We can directly get the data from store. Just nobody is preventing us from doing that. That is just a one line of code to get the data from our global state to React component. But when you want to modify the state, it means if you want to change any data in your global state or the Redux store, you need to go through some Redux protocol. So just let me go through this protocol. So basically you need to create an action. 
action is just a redux term what action means it's an javascript object which will hold two property which is type and the data and in the type it will hold the type of operation you want to perform on this redux store let's say you want to add a node so in this case the type should be add node and this is totally up to you you can put any value in this type just try to name this more readable and that's all and in the data come on just guess this come on all the data related to the node so the id of the node the body of the node the created date of the node is important property of that node so you need to create an object which will hold two property type and the data that's all then you need to create another function which is reducer so basically what it does it takes the previous state so the state currently present in our redux store and the action so the action you have just created and then based on that action type it will set the new state with this data that's all so just let me repeat again you have created an action with a type and a data let's say you have created an action to add a node so the type is add node and the data is data related to the node okay and then you pass this to the reducer and the reducer will get the previous state so the state currently available in our store and the action so this will check if the action dot type is equal to is equal to add node i will do some operation that will eventually add a new node in our store so that's the whole story nothing complicated that's a simple redux flow you might have some confusion so let's understand how redux will work in our app if i see this diagram okay cool so this is a detailed diagram so in our app this add nodes all nodes important nodes and nodes components are present fine so again we will create a redux store that will hold all our states okay now we can directly get the data from store thus nobody is preventing us from doing that so let's say we need this nodes array so we can directly get that data from store and also from this important nodes we can directly get the data from the store but in the case of add nodes we need to create a node and the new node should be added in our nodes array right it means we need to modify the store in that case we need to follow a redux protocol so what is that so basically you need to create an action so just look at this okay so this object holds two property which is type and payload and the type is add node and this payload is data and payload means whatever the data you want to attach with this action so you need to create an object and then this is important guys if you want to modify the store with this data you have only one option i remember only one option and this only one is important okay you have to dispatch this dispatch is a built in function provided by redux so you need to pass this action through dispatch and that's it then you need to create a function which is reducer so basically it will take the previous state and the current action and then based on that action type it will set a new state and assign to the store that's all now let's talk about this node remember we can toggle the important and non important from this node component it means you are modifying the state right so again you need to follow the redux protocol so just let me go through this again okay so in this case the action type should be toggle important and then the payload is the node id right so whichever node you want to modify and then you need to dispatch that action and it will get to a reducer it will get the previous state as the first parameter so the state currently present in our store and then the action so the current action so based on that type it will perform some operation change the state and then assign to the store and then again the all nodes and important nodes can get the data and that's a really simple redux flow okay so let's now implement this okay so to implement redux we will follow some steps so that you guys don't get confused we will use these steps as a reference okay so let's create another folder in our source which is redux redux nice okay so first of all create a redux store so inside the redux folder create a file which is store.js store.js nice inside this we will import a function create store from redux import create store from redux nice so just create a store so i will also export this so export const store create store okay so this will take a reducer and a initial state as a parameter so let's create an initial state mm, const initial state okay 
let's say notes array and just a string like note 1 note 2 it should be an array of objects but right now just to show you this is an array of string and then create a reducer so this reducer is another function which will take the action and the previous state as the parameter and it will return a new state okay so that's the redux story so currently the previous state is the initial state right so just copy this initial state and then the action we don't have any action so just leave that and then return the same state and again guys reducer does much more than this just to set up the store and to show you how redux works i'm just creating a simplest reducer function so i will just pass this so the first parameter is the reducer and the second parameter is the initial state cool the store is ready so if i go to my steps okay create the store it needs a reducer and an initial state fine then wrap the react app so that any component can access the store okay so we have created the store now we need to wrap our react app with the store right so if i go to my app.js it's better if you go to index.js okay so here we have this app right this app component where all the magic happens we'll just wrap this with a component called provider so provider okay so this will be auto imported okay so let me talk about this provider so this provider is coming from react redux basically react redux is a package that connects our react app with the redux store and this provider component it makes our store available to all our components okay so just wrap this using provider nice cool and now you just need to pass the store as a property so store just import the store import store from dot slash redux slash store nice and just pass the store to the store property okay so the global state is available to all our components nice and then the third step com configure the dev tools okay so before that you need to install a chrome extension which is yes this redux dev tools so just install this extension this will help you to visualize the redux store okay so let's go to the third step mm, this one configure dev tools okay so so if i go to my store so just import compose with dev tools from redux dev tools extension and then pass this compose with dev tools inside the store so compose with dev tools and call this that's it so now if i go to my extension just go to console make sure you have opened your react app and then go to this redux tab if you can see this in this top order it should be available if you click on this arrow so look at this the extension is on right and if you click on this state it should show your initial state so remember the initial state is node 1 and node 2 yeah that's the power of this extension you can visualize this redux store okay let's move to the fourth step so the fourth step is ship the reducer to a separate file okay this is important guys cause you may have multiple reducers in your app so let's say a separate reducer for authentication a separate reducer for profile a separate reducer for user okay so what i will do inside this redux folder i'll create another folder which is reducers so reducers and then inside this i'll create a reducer which is notes and now i like to use reducer in the file name so that i can easily identify the file that it's a reducer file of notes so notes.reducer.js cool now here i will create a function so const reducer remember it takes the previous state so previous state and an action and this action is a javascript object and we'll talk about this later yeah cool so just let me create a dummy action as a comment so that you can easily get this so action type is add note and then the payload let's say an object which will hold the data so just let me comment this and now i can destructure this action right so const type and payload from this action okay cool and now based on the action type we can perform some separate operation in our state 
you can either use if the type is this or if the type is that or if there is a multiple if else conditions you can use switch so I'll be using switch and I'll get the type a normal switch case so I'll check if the case is add node I return something and this is also giving me a warning because I need to have a default case default just return the previous state don't change anything cool okay so what I'm doing I'm creating a function name reducer which will take the previous state and the accent the previous state is not created yet I'll be creating this in a minute and from this accent I'm just extracting the type and the payload and based on the type we are performing a switch operation if the type is add node we'll do some operation and if the type does not match we'll not do any operation and just return the previous state so let me create the previous state so const let's say an initial state okay so this is an object which will hold an array nodes and the nodes are array of objects right okay so so nodes have id let's say one it has some date date 25 slash um, 12 slash 20 I'm just hard coding some notes and then is important which is by default false and then the data right okay so note um, I am a note one and I'll just copy this and create another note I am note two nice and the ID is two cool and just pass this initial state as a parameter so at first render it should be passed as the previous state so initial state nice and now just export the reducer export default reducer cool and in the store file store.js just import the reducer so I don't need this reducer I don't need this initial state as my reducer has the initial state cool so just import the reducer so so as that was the default export I can rename that right so notes reducer notes reducer from dot slash reducer slash notes reducer and just pass this note reducers cool initial state I don't need this nice if I go to my chrome extension I should see my initial state something different if I go to my state look at this so if I just expand this so these all are the initial nodes okay so we have created a separate reducer file right so let's see the next step we read data from Redux store in all nodes now the fun starts guys so let's read some data from Redux store so if I go to my all nodes component okay nice okay so here we are getting these nodes from our app component right so we are passing these nodes in our all nodes we are not going to pass this so just remove these nodes as a property we'll directly get the nodes from the redux store i mean that's why we are doing all this bad stuff so if i go to my all nodes okay just remove these nodes too because i am not getting this as a property so how can i get the data from redux store okay so there are two ways to get data from redux store and i'll show you both the ways and then i'll tell you what is recommended Okay, so first of all we can import the store and directly get the data from that store so import store from dot dot slash redux slash store and now inside this all nodes we can get the data using store dot get state this will give me the entire store from the redux and what I need basically the node state right so we need this state so nodes get dot nodes and I'll assign this to const notes just save this hope there is no error nice and if I go to my app look at these guys I am note 1 I am note 2 inside these all notes so we are reading the data from Redux store right and let me create another note inside this store just to show you how this works so inside this reducer copy this paste this just change the ID I am node 3 save this if I go to my app look at this cool 
okay so we can now read the data from the global state now it's time to modify the data in our global state okay so what we will do we will add a node in our global state remember we can only modify the global state using dispatch function so let's go to your code and inside the create node component first of all we don't need this property no com no property drilling okay so we need to dispatch an action right so just import the store store and this will be auto imported from the redux store look at this import store from redux store and this store will give me a function which is dispatch so store dot dispatch okay this will dispatch an action and that action has two property type and the payload so the type is add note and the payload is my data and I don't need this function create node okay so what will happen if you click on this button this will trigger this handle submit function and this handle submit function will prepare the data and then it will dispatch an action and this action has two property add node and the payload and it actually will send this action to the reducers so it will check all our reducers so inside these reducers it will check the action type so if the action type is add node which is masked here so it means it will perform some operation here okay so what I need to do here basically it will return a new state right so first of all I will copy the previous state so the previous state and then I will overwrite the nodes array I will copy all the previous nodes so previous state dot nodes and the new node remember this is coming as the payload so payload let's see if I create a node it should add a new node okay so these three nodes are coming from our initial state and now let's create another node before that just open the redux tool okay cool so let me create another node mm, another node create add node look at this guys add node is triggered and if I see the state look at this here we have four nodes right the new node is another node let's create another node another node to add node and also we have five nodes in our state and this is another node two but look at this guys our UI is not updated so if I just expand this our UI is not updated if I click another node three we have six nodes in our state but our UI still shows three states so that's the problem with our current approach the way we are reading the data it's not recommended at all I just wanted to show you all those ways okay so we are now reading the data we are now dispatching an accent to modify the state nice let's go to our next step okay so our next step is connect the component with redux store now this is one of the fundamental redux stuff guys just focus on this so if i go to my app let's go to all nodes import connect from react redux so import connect from now this connect function needs two parameter one is map state to props and the second is map dispatch to props so let's create a function which is const map state to props and this will get the state as a parameter and it will return a new object okay and we just need to pass this in the connect so connect and connect will return a function that will wrap our component and then we can pass map state to props okay so what's what is happening okay so this connect function subscribe to the store it means whatever the data we are getting from the store if the data changes at any time the component will be re-rendered and now this connect needs two values as a parameter which is map state to props and map dispatch to props and we'll see map dispatch to props in a second and what map state to prop does it gets the state or redux state that is available through the provider so this will pass the full redux state and from this state we can extract the data so we need nodes from the state dot nodes cool and now as the name suggests map state to props so the connect what it does it will pass this value this nodes value as a property of this component it means it is now available as a property in my all nodes so we can just destructure these nodes and we don't need this line just comment it out for, for the reference let's see if I now create a new node node 5 add node let's see 
look at this guys my ui is responding accordingly so node 6 nice node 7 yeah cool and now let's see the map dispatch to props so dispatch means whenever we need to modify the state so let's go to a component where we are actually modifying the state let's go to create component first of all there are a lot of files so just let me close all those files okay so in the inside the create node so here again i will import connect and wrap our component with the connect so i'll just auto import this so connect okay it's a function and then it will return another function which will wrap the create node and by the way guys if you are confused about these two parentheses back to back i remember javascript can also return a function so this connect function will return a function and that will eventually wrap this create node component so that all our values are available as a property okay so here we'll see const map dispatch to props and it will get the dispatch function from the connect and it will also return an object cool and just pass this map dispatch to props remember this connect needs two parameters first one is map state to props and the second one is map dispatch to props and if you don't want to read any data from the store you can just put null and then the second one is map dispatch to props okay so now normally we don't create this map dispatch to props inside the same file we make a separate accent creator file where we get the data we prepare the data and then dispatch an accent and we'll see that later but now just create the function in the same file so it will return a function so return i'll name this function add new node so this function will get the data and this will be an arrow function and then it will dispatch the same action so just copy this type and payload type and payload cool and now this function is available in this component as a property as the name suggests map dispatch to props so we can just destructure this we don't need this store dot dispatch we can just destructure this the name of the function is add new node right cool and then call this function add new node just pass the data nice let's see if it works or not create a new node node 6 add note look at this guys it's working fine now you might have some confusion like we can dispatch an accent using stored.dispatch right then what's the need of creating another function that will dispatch that accent right so basically what happens inside redux whenever you want to do some asynchronous stuff like some database related stuff some api related stuff and then pass the data to the accent payload to modify the global state in that case you can't use stored.dispatch in that case you need to use a middleware which is redux thunk and you have to create a separate function that will dispatch the new action so that's why it's a better practice to create a separate action file and i'll be doing that in the next section where i'll be creating a separate action file and i'll also implement that toggle important feature using that separate action file so this section is getting longer so just give me a minute and let me refactor the code we are just passing some unnecessary properties from the app so if i go to app.js okay look at this we don't need this create node function right we are creating a separate function which is add new node and then this important nodes we are not doing anything right now and this all nodes toggle nodes okay cool so just give me a minute, see you in the next section.